If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and reread the problem before listening on. We have drawn a picture of this sound wave traveling longitudinally through a little air tube. And this black line in the center of the picture is going to represent a position of x is equal to 0. Now you could choose any value for x, but it turns out that it's much easier to use x is equal to 0. And that is because this term kx right here, if we plug 0 in for x, will drop out. So we can actually simplify the equation of the sound wave. So after removing that term, we have the simplified equation of our sound wave. And now what we're going to do is start our air molecule at that black line. So if we start our air molecule at that black line, that would mean that the position of the air molecule is equal to zero. And we're going to allow the time to equal zero as well because we're starting our air molecule at that position. So at time is equal to zero, the air molecule's position is equal to zero, and we're going to fill those values into our equation so that we can find the phase angle. So this S of t, this position here, is going to equal zero, and then the time right there is also going to equal zero. And now that we've inserted those values, we can simplify the equation and solve for the phase angle. Here we have 3,000 radians per second multiplied by zero seconds, so that term right there will become zero. And now we will continue solving for the phase angle. If we divide both sides of this equation by the 6 nanometers, then the left-hand side remains 0, and the 6 nanometers cancel on the right-hand side. And then at this stage, you have to ask yourself, well, what angle has a cosine equal to 0? What's the smallest, simplest angle whose cosine is equal to 0? And hopefully we know from trigonometry that if the angle was equal to pi over 2 radians, then the cosine of that angle would equal zero. So now that we have the phase angle, we can come back up and we can plug that phase angle in for this Greek letter here, which I'm suddenly forgetting, but we're gonna plug that in and rewrite this equation. And of course that Greek letter was phi, so shame on me there. But now we can rewrite the equation a little bit further because we're going to be able to take advantage of a trigonometric identity. We don't need to do this, but it's just a little bit easier perhaps. So we have the cosine of the 3000 t plus pi over two. Now we might remember from trigonometry that if you have the cosine of your variable, let's just call it t, it wouldn't matter if there was a coefficient in front of t, but let's say you have the cosine of your variable plus pi over two, well, that is equivalent to the sine of your variable t. So it's just going to be easier to rewrite our equation by following that identity. So that means we can rewrite this as the sine of 3000 t. We're going to drop the radians per second for now just for clarity, and we can rewrite the rest of the equation. And now it might be worth drawing a picture, a kind of rudimentary picture of the graph of this function to get a feel for what we're trying to solve for. So here's the graph of this sine function. It's passing through the origin. It's got an amplitude of six nanometers. And we're trying to figure out the time between the two particular positions. So the question wants us to figure out the time between this position of two nanometers and then this position down here, which would be negative two nanometers. So, whoops, so we're trying to find the time interval between those two positions. And basically our strategy is going to be the following. We're gonna find how long it takes to get to the positive two nanometers, starting from t equals zero, of course. And however much time it takes to get to positive two nanometers, that would be the same amount of time it would take to get from negative two nanometers back to the origin. So in other words, the green time interval is the same as the yellow time interval. So if we can find the green time interval, we could then just double that answer, and that's going to give us the total amount of time to travel between negative 2 nanometers and positive 2 nanometers. So again, we're going to try to find the time required to go from t equals 0 up to a position of 2 nanometers. So that means for this position here, we're going to fill in positive 2 nanometers and then try to solve for time t. So to do that, to solve for t, we'll divide both sides by 6. So you, on the left side, you get 2 sixths, or 1 third. And then we would have to take the inverse sine of both sides of the equation. So if we take the inverse sine of the left side, we have the following quantity. On the other side, taking the inverse sine of sine eliminates the sine term, so we just have 3000 t. So you want to pick up your calculator and make sure it's set to radian mode, and then take the inverse sine of 1 third, and you would end up with approximately 0.3398, that's equal to 3,000 t, and then just divide both sides by 3,000. Now you're going to get a tiny number. This is going to be the number of seconds, and it looks like it's about 1.13 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds. And perhaps we can convert that into milliseconds by multiplying by 1,000.
it's just a little bit easier of a number to work with. So just multiply your answer by a thousand, since there's a thousand milliseconds in one second, and you would end up with approximately 0.113 milliseconds. That's equal to the time, but let's remember what time that was. That was the time required for the sound wave to travel from its position of zero to its position of positive two nanometers. So in other words, that's the green interval of time. The yellow interval of time is the same, remember. It's a symmetric scenario. So if we double this time, then we would get our answer. So by doubling the time, we will get 0.227 approximately. That is in milliseconds. That is the time required to go from a position of negative two nanometers to positive two nanometers. And that is the correct answer to the question.